of a good thing. No, no. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your first and last name with the spelling, please? Yes, my name is Frank, F-R-A-N-K, Newman, N-E-U-M-A-N-N. -N. Frank, for those in Southern California that are going to be seeing this, where are we exactly? Okay, we're in the villages in Florida, uh, and the house that you're, you can look at over here to the left uh, is my house. Uh, in February 15th, sinkholes started developing uh, on my neighbor's uh, yard first and then in between our houses and there was a total of eight sinkholes in the 24-hour period between February 14th and February 15th. Since that time there's been numerous additional sinkholes just like yesterday. There was a one in my front yard to, to the right over here and the big one that comes out from my yard into the street and into the neighbor's yard. There's another one down here that in my neighbor's yard and, and the storm pipe goes right down this area and that's right off of it. There, the, the lake has had four times that it totally drained. There's been sinkhole uh, numerous times in there and there's a new sinkhole on, on the golf course that developed yesterday sometime. So, so we've had a lot of sinkholes. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so let me ask you, when you say the lake, the lake is directly behind your house on the golf course? Yes, it's on Nancy Lopez Golf Court. There's a lake there. It, the, the sewer pipe is a 42-inch pipe. It goes to the lake, and uh, it had burst somewhere between uh, the front here to the lake, somewhere probably between the two houses. And with that happening, uh, there, there was a correlation between that and all these sinkholes that were in a straight line going out to the pond and into the pond and even now down here. Now yesterday another sinkhole happened, right? Which which part of this sinkhole, because I know it's it's almost like an ongoing thing, right? It's just getting larger and larger and larger, right? Yeah, well, more sinkholes, yeah. The one over to the right over here, um, I could tell there was a depression in the yard there for a period of several weeks but it kept getting a little bit deeper and then of course it blew and it, now there's a hole there. This one here there was a small sinkhole there that was about six feet into my lot and it was oh five feet in diameter and it got about four feet deep 
uh, and they had put grout and, and other cement in that originally. It still sunk down, then they put more grout and stuff in. Well, now that's in this whole uh, complex. The whole thing uh, uh, went down, eroded, and that's, that's probably the largest sinkhole that went into the street. And you can see how the street is so buckled. Uh, and that's all along the storm sewer route. That storm sewer goes all the way down here, goes to the left street over here. So if you were a betting man, what would you would say that the sewer drain may have caused this? Uh, I think it definitely helped cause yeah. the sinkholes. And then tell us about the first night. I mean, were you asleep when it happened? What well, did it sound I was like? awake at 12:30, and I heard noise uh, of my neighbors, uh, but I thought it was thunder. You know, it made noises that the sinkhole was was collapsing. And I heard that twice within a half hour period. Well, I even went outside and looked at the sky and stuff, and I thought, geez, it really doesn't look like there should be any thunder. But, you know, I never realized a sinkhole would develop, so I, uh, I just blew it off and went and watched my Olympics. So I went to bed at 1.20. At 10 minutes after 2, I got awoken, and I thought somebody was breaking into my house. The sinkhole uh, on, on the far end of my land there right by my half bath which is off of the pool um, I heard this enormous amount of noise so I jumped out of bed I thought somebody was trying to break into the house in the back I went back there didn't see anything I didn't go outside and I went back to bed and it happened one more time I got up and about that time the lady that was in this house she had big cracks going in her in her house by all this commotion and she had called 911 and the police got out here they woke us up as well, and we left our house at about 3 o'clock in the morning. And we stayed at this house the rest of the night. And then we saw the, the uh, continuation of the sinkholes developing from the first one. My second one had already developed, the third one, the fourth one, and then the ones in the pool, and then one over on the golf course over to the far side over here. So you haven't been able to return to your house since February? It's February 15th. We had a abandoned it and then we took our furnitures out about a month and a half later and of course um, uh, we, we you know there's no air and no electricity and stuff in the house so we wanted to get our furniture in, in an air conditioned storage. Frank I know that you were telling the other stations that you were you were seriously considering returning back to your home and I don't blame you from what I under, from what I understand you've been here what 14 or 15 years yeah, correct? Yeah 14. So what what would what would they have to do to convince you that it's safe to stay there? Well, so you can continue to have memories. Yeah, the first thing is they'd have to demo my whole pool and put a brand new pool in because they'd have to stabilize the ground that's underneath my pool. Secondly, the, uh, I, I hired my own engineer because I wasn't um, believing everything from the insurance engineer. Uh, I would want to make sure that this, the underground structure that they put in they put rods across your whole underground area they put grout in and actually when they get through the it's solid it's much more solid under your house than it would be originally i would have to my insurance my engineer would have to tell me that everything would be safe and there would not be any problems you know with the house i have a very well built house a little better built than this one to the left of us here and because of that, I didn't get the internal damage as much as what this house got. So my internal damage yeah, is there. I've got you know, uh, floors that sink about three inches. I've got ceilings that have bubbles on them. I've got walls that have uh, moved a little bit. Um, and I've got doors that can open way in the far side of the house. And I've got cabinets that are cattywampus from, from the shifting of everything. I've got some problems up on the roof. So. They have to fix all that. Frank, has the villages reached out to you at all? Are they, are they assisting you in relocation or anything? Well, they didn't do that. I did that myself. Um, but uh, we found a place and we're staying in Piedmont, about two miles from here. And one last question. Is it just you and your wife that live there? Yes, that's all. And you guys were both okay? We're fine. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, Frank, I really do appreciate you taking time to speak Okay, thank you.